Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about how strange, weird and unusual our solar system is after all. We're actually going to be discussing this relatively new study that um, tries to figure out why is it that there's a certain type of a planet that's missing yet again from our solar system, but seems to be present in many other star systems out there. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So there is actually another gap that we can find in planetary masses and planetary types right here. It seems that um, in between Saturn and Jupiter and also uh, Uranus and Neptune, there is something missing. And that something is referred to as sub-Saturn. This is actually from a paper that you can find in the description below. But the idea here is that um, we know that Saturn is about 95, I believe, masses of Earth. Whereas Uranus and Neptune are not even 20 masses of Earth. As a matter of fact, uh, Uranus is only approximately 15 masses of Earth. And so there is definitely something missing here. Where is a planet in between? And for the longest time, the way that this was explained is through, uh, well, essentially planetary creation. Uh, let me just try to show you what I mean by this. By creating a very rudimentary uh, solar system when it was essentially just being born. So right here you may actually see that there's a ring of particles, very massive particles as a matter of fact. A lot of these are essentially just um, ices and things like hydrogen and helium. And this is basically the early solar system. There's our sun. Now uh, the core accretion model, as it's known, uh, stipulates that basically, uh, once upon a time, only a few uh, thousands or millions of years after the initial creation of the solar system, some of the objects created the so-called core. And this was usually an Earth-like object, so we can actually go ahead and go in here, maybe take Mercury or something, and uh, place it in orbit here. And this core, um, as it started to accumulate material, grew larger and larger in size. Now, we're going to see if this happens actually here. Uh, we might need to give it a little bit more mass, actually, because according to the core accretion theory, the mass has to be somewhere around 10 masses of Earth. And so at this point, this is when it's actually going to start accumulating all of this gas. And the gas is going to start, as you can see, colliding with it. And with, within only um, a million years or so, it will actually vacuum up all of the gas in the vicinity. And this is how we believe Jupiter and Saturn uh, were actually born. And this is why they're so massive. So as you can see, they start vacuuming up all of the material. Now, unlike Jupiter and Saturn, uh, Neptune and Uranus didn't really have this massive core. They didn't really get a, ma a massive enough core to start vacuuming up um, materials in their outskirts. And so they never got to grow to large sizes. And for this reason, they were kind of stuck at being only about under 20 masses of Earth, whereas Jupiter became over 300 masses of Earth. And so um, that's essentially the core accretion model um, in a nutshell. But there is a problem with that model. And the problem is that we now start discovering more and more of these unusual sub-Saturn um, planets. As a matter of fact, we've discovered about 30 planets, including this one that you see on the screen right here, whose mass fits right between uh, Uranus and Saturn. In other words, they seem to uh, kind of discredit this um, accretion model. They seem to actually contradict what we believed for many years. This is one of such planets. We've actually recently recalculated its mass and redefined its creation as well. And it's basically this type of a planet known as sub-Saturn. It's known as OGLE 2012, BLG 950 LB. It was discovered back in 2012, but it was um, recalculated very recently to be approximately 39 masses of Earth, right between um, Saturn and Uranus and Neptune. So there's actually quite a lot of them we found. You can see many of them right here. And as you can see, there is actually quite a lot more planets that are being discovered nowadays because we actually found a much better technique of discovering them. 
Uh, using gravitational lensing, we can now discover a lot more of these objects that we thought didn't exist. And for this reason, we now think that the so-called core accretion model, and specifically the so-called runaway gas accretion, which you see right here, slowly happening as my Mercury is getting more and more mass um, acquired from the outskirts, um, might actually be incorrect. In other words, maybe just maybe we were wrong about this whole uh, planets vacuuming up gas because of the massive enough core. We think that um, this is maybe not how the planets were born because even though we thought that sub-Saturns didn't really exist out there, we've found quite enough of them to basically be wrong about this assumption. Now, if the uh, core accretion model is wrong, and specifically if the runaway gas accretion model is wrong, in other words, if these planets didn't accumulate gas because of a large enough core, um, we might also be wrong about something related to Earth. Specifically, the runaway gas accretion model, this model right here, also explains how water came to Earth. In other words, um, the habitability of Earth is sort of based on this model. But if the model is incorrect, then we were incorrect in assuming how Earth became habitable and how it got its water. In other words, all of this water may have not actually came to Earth how we believed it came to Earth for the longest time. And so this new paper actually kind of tells us that maybe we need to reassess our planetary creation models. And we also need to reassess them for one really important reason. Because um, by studying how our planet acquired water, we might be able to understand how planets become habitable and thus apply the, this new model to other exoplanets. We might be able to actually find a lot more habitable planets out there if we actually get a good enough model that explains how this thing right here, this blue bowl, became blue, how it acquired all of this water. Now, uh, for the most part, the core accretion model might still be kind of accurate, but the runaway gas accretion uh, might need to be kind of recalculated, reassessed, and um, re-explained. Because we have now discovered so many sub-Saturn planets, and because of our ability to actually detect a lot more in the future using the new gravitational lensing techniques, uh, we now believe that there is definitely a lot more planets out there that we didn't think existed. But a very interesting part of this observation is that this really shows us how super weird our solar system is. We seem to be lacking quite a lot of planets. We seem to be actually um, having planets or positions of planets that doesn't really exist in many other uh, star systems. And for the most part, what seems to be quite common in other star systems seems to be really weird in ours. So, um, yeah, this study once again shows how super weird the solar system really is. Our planet Earth, after all, might be actually quite unique and quite unusual, and uh, our terrestrial planets too. And this suggests that our planet Earth and also all the terrestrial planets in our solar system might be super unique and very, very unusual compared to other star systems. So maybe not really good news for people hoping to one day find habitable Earth-like planets, but at the same time, once we understand how these sub-Saturns are formed and most importantly, how we actually uh, acquired water on our own planet, we might be able to use these new uh, theories to try to find something else out there that we could potentially call Earth 2.0. For now though, maybe that's not the best news out there, but nevertheless, a very interesting finding and yet again, an unusual type of a planet that doesn't seem to exist in our own solar system. On that note, check out the paper in the description below. Thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else that you may have not known and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Subscribe if you still haven't. Space out and as always, bye-bye.